So some are saying that the bull is taking a breather as the S&P barely kept their streak alive today. Uh, also the NASDAQ, uh, eight straight up days. Now the uh, Dow hasn't been as fortunate. A common word I'm hearing, the theme I'm hearing is exhaustion. Another word might be that there's no real news to create angst or joy. One might think that the bond rally might help because the bond rally is going crazy or possibly the drop in oil in the oil and gasoline and natural gas prices. I would call that a bust. Uh, the bonds are now under 5% last time. I'm sorry, under 4.5% the last time I checked. So, and then uh, Tesla, who's had almost universally good news and now a price increase planned for tomorrow. Um, they are uh, kind of stuck. I don't know what's going on here. This is Randy Kirk. Uh, and you know what? Hit, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notice bu not notify button. And then um, I did a video earlier today on a huge, massive move, move by Trueflation to adjust their inflation index. And it moved it from 2.37% to just over 3%, a, a change of over 0.5%. This really matters. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to do a recap, a very short, just like a paragraph recap of that uh, video that I did earlier today, if you just want to hear the, the, the main parts. Uh, and then I'll give you a card uh, if you want to go see the entire video, which you should. This is, I went into all the details of which categories are still uh, problematic and also details of why it mattered so much because it really significantly matters for the stock market, for the economy, for Tesla specifically. Anyway, <laughs> so that would be something you want to look at. Obviously, you do want to buy some cyber trucks. Uh, uh, bottle openers, and you do want to join Patreon. And I want to thank everybody for the last like week. It's been great. So many folks have been joining, and so many people have been buying the uh, Cybertruck bottle openers. Keep up the good work. It's getting close to Christmas. So I am going to, uh, I'm not usually the guy that uh, does pictures. Um, you know that about me. But today I had four really good pictures and a chart. So I thought, what the heck? I'm going to give you some pictures today. So let's start with that optimist that you saw in the thumbnail, although he did have a different uh, a balloon there with the words in it. We'll talk about that in a second. According to Tesla Bot Journal, um, that's at Tesla Bot Journal, uh, he's saying that uh, Grok, which I'm going to go with Grok, okay? They asked Elon yesterday, they said, is it Grok? Is it Grook? Is it Grok? You know, is it, what, what is the right pronunciation? He said, all of those. So he says, it's all of them. Grok is easier for me. Maybe it's easier for you. I'm going to go with Grok. Anyway, according to this, it says that Grok will grant Optimus humor and sociability. I can imagine some advanced evolution of Grok becoming a key ingredient of Optimus's world model, enabling human-like learning, adaptability, cognitive abilities via deep contextual understanding and cross-domain generalization. Elon agreed with that statement and included some humor the other day. He says, why, from Grok, okay, this is from Grok, why don't scientists trust atoms? And the answer is because they make up everything. Yeah, okay, I think that's very funny. If you don't get it right away, you know, it might take you a second. Okay, <laughs> anyway, all right, the next one was, I had to show you this. This is just phenomenal. So you guys know Scott Walter on the show all the time. He lives very near the Cape and gets to watch the rockets taking off all the time. And uh, he's been trying to pull this off. He has a Starlink, uh, Starship, Starlink, Starlink dish on his roof. And he's been trying to position himself just exactly right at the time that these uh, rockets are taking off with his goal is to get this shot. So this is on his roof, okay? And there's a Saturn Seven or a Saturn, I don't know which one it is, but one of those taken off and he's got his dish and it's making, uh, well, if you can't tell what it's making, then, you know, you need to do some more. <laughs> yes, yeah. Anyway, so there's the X logo in a very special way. I thought Scott is to be congratulated for capturing that particular shot. So the next one is uh, there's been some leaking about aspects of the Cybertruck. Shock and surprise. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to give you an entire list of all the leaks. So if you want to see... Everything that was leaked, you got to show up for that show tomorrow morning. But one of the things that was leaked 
was the fact that this is what the power supply is going to look like. So you can see there's two 110s and one 220. People were asking, what is that little thing at the bottom there? Is that a hook of some kind? Or, you know, what is that exactly? We don't know. So anyway, but I will uh, give you that entire list tomorrow morning. Uh, but there is one aspect of the leak. Okay, and then we've got this one. <laughs> this is a, a cyber truck caught in the wild. And look at these wheels. So I don't know if these wheels are... Uh, you know, something that they're actually going to offer or, uh, you know, but anyway, uh, I thought they were more interesting than most of the caps, wood, you know, hubcaps and, and wheel covers that I've seen recently. All right. And then I do have this uh, this chart because, you know, everybody's talking about how um, BEV, you know, sales, we got, you know, demand problems and, you know, they're slowing down and everything else. Well, you can tell by this chart, this is through the end of the third quarter, you can tell by this chart that the S-curve has diminished. Okay, there's no doubt about that. Let's not kid ourselves, okay? We have seen this year that it's been, we've been struggling in this particular economy, and maybe just because that's how these S-curves can act, is that we're not quite moving as rapidly up the S-curve as we have been moving previously. I think this is going to change, but let me just give some of the details here. Uh, this is according to Inside EV. In terms of all electric car registrations, the BEV focused Tesla is the top manufacturer, no change. The company noted over 1.3 mil million registrations, we know that, which is 20% of the BEV segment. Um, and uh, compared to 18.5 a year ago, it means that despite all of the um, uh, all of the years, uh, despite all the years, huh. Tesla is still expanding faster than the industry average. Whoops, I just messed up my thing here. All right, uh, BYD, which is second best, noted slightly over 1 million units and a 15.9% share in the BEV segment. That's up from 11.9, so it also is increasing faster than the overall market, which I don't think anybody's surprised by that. This huge growth might soon allow BYD to match Tesla. It almost happened in quarter three. Um, Tesla and BYD combined are responsible for 36% of all BEV sales compared to 30.4% a year ago. With, with a, another year of growth like that, they might be at 40%. That would not be shocking. Overall, the top five were up, uh, uh, up from 53% to almost 57% of the market. That means the other three must have just been kind of keeping track. So you've got, uh, so far, you've got uh, Volkswagen with 500, they're, they're number three, believe it or not. Volkswagen is number three in the world with 510,000 and a 7.7% share. Last year, they were at 7.4. SAIC, which you've probably never heard of unless you listen to my channel all the time. They're a major uh, OEM that makes for all kinds of different brands in China. They did 491,000. They have a 7.5 share, so they dropped a little bit. And then GAC, similar to SAIC, almost exactly similar. They are at 373 with a 5.7% share. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, didn't show hmm, for some reason what they did last year. Okay, total over 6.5 million, about 12% total share of the, of the worldwide uh, uh, numbers. That is without the third largest economy, Japan doing hardly squat, the sixth largest economy, India, doing almost nothing. That's without Russia, Africa, and Latin America really being in the business at all. So if we see another 50% increase next year, the world will be getting close to 20% uh, BEV uh, out there. And that doesn't count the hybrids. This is definitely without hybrids. So if you add the hybrids, it's already getting close. It'll be around 70% total this year. I don't count uh, the, I don't count the hybrids. As we noted earlier today, Tesla has now confirmed that there will be an increase. This is an actual Tesla website, have confirmed that there will be an increase in the Model 3 and Model Y prices tomorrow night, Shanghai time. Uh, this came very late in the trading session, so it probably won't make a difference until tomorrow. You might expect to see some you know, pop in the after hours, but so far, not so much. Anyway, uh, with the current mood, this particular week, which seems to be this kind of, eh, wait and see, let's think about it for a while, uh, not ready to commit kind of mood going on right now. Um, you know, maybe we won't see a pop tomorrow either, but man, the overall news for Tesla this week has been fantastic. Uh, this week and last week, the end of last week.
Well, okay, earlier today, I did that video about this huge change in the trueflation numbers. I know that to go back and listen to that 15 or 20 minute video, it's very nerdy. It's into a lot of details about, you know, transportation going up this much and housing going up that much and whatnot and why that's happening and what the future might look like on each one of those. But I got to tell you something, if you really want to understand the economy, if you really want to understand the stock market and how it reacts to some of these things, I really encourage you to go back and look at it. I'll put a card up uh, in just a second. Um, okay, the upshot is, it is going to change people's, including mine, analysis of the coming interest rate cuts. So where I saw bonds potentially, like Gary uh, Black said, eventually going down to uh, 4.0, I now see bonds that can stall out somewhere around this 4.5, or if they do drop to 4.25, which is my old number, in the near term, that's going to be it. So 4.25 to 4.5, that's where we're going to be. And that's where we are right now. It's actually dropped below that 4.5 number, been around 4.48, 4.49 in the uh, early going in the pre-market. Uh, uh, we'll, and we'll look at this in a couple of seconds. But anyway, um, I, I don't think it's going to drop below that 4.25 unless we see clear indications from the CPI, the PPI, you know, that match trueflation's 3% number. If we see the 3% number popping up, I think we're going to stay around that 4.25 to 4.5. Now, if we start to see it dropping below that, going down to the 2.7, 2.6 range, all, now we can see it going down to the 4% mark, okay? I think if we stay in that 4.25 to 4.5, the Fed will be perfectly happy with that. So what is going to happen? I don't know, but the trueflation thing changed everything because everybody believed that trueflation was consistently tracking a couple of months ahead of the CPI. And now all of a sudden, trueflation has changed all that by adding a lot of new data, which is good. And you always want to improve your results if you can improve your results. But the amount of the change in a single day was dramatic and impactful and, uh, you know, I think you should know about this, the kind of thing I think you should be paying attention to. Um, so um, I also promised you that I would look up and see what was going on with mortgage rates. Uh, bank rates said that for today, Wednesday, November 8th, the current average interest rates for a 30-year fixed mortgage is 7.83, falling 23 basis points in a single week. That's pretty fast for mortgage rates to come down. As I mentioned, I had uh, Bill Raymond on my show a while back, and he pointed out that's how mortgage rates are set. It's by the 10-year bond, primarily. As that bond goes up and down, you can pretty well chart where mortgage rates are going to go. So based on that, I would expect mortgage rates to continue down, uh, possibly into the 7.5 range between now and the end of the year, and then dropping below that in the new year. And if you if you have an interest in talking to Bill Raymond, I always have his information every single day down in the description below. All right. Remember, I said I wanted to give you that card uh, if you want to go back and look at that uh, video uh, that I had earlier today. All right. Let's look at the numbers um, real quick here. OK, let's start off with uh, Tesla and the after hours is down a dollar thirty three. So it's about a half a percent. Um, and let's look at the rest of these numbers here. We have got. The 10-year is still down about two basis points to 4.4. I'm sorry, it just changed as I was watching it. It's down one and a half basis points to 4.494. It's been as low as about 4.484, 4.482. All right, we have the two-year is only down, like basically it's flat, which means it's inverting more. Okay, there we go again. And we've got the two-month up one and a half basis points, inverting more. So this continues to, I know, I, I, I love being right. It continues my theory that this has nothing to do with predicting a recession uh, and has everything to do with the change in the way that the economy is structured. And I've already gone into that a few times. If you haven't heard that before, I'll wait and not say it for another week <laughs> because some of you might be getting tired of it. Okay, let me see. What else? The other numbers. Let me see if oil has continued to be uh, down. Um, let's see real quick. Oil is uh, up 26 cents, but it's still at $75.59. $75.59. 75 
$59. That is down $20, almost $20 in what, three weeks. Gasoline is also way down and uh, natural gas is way down. So these, uh, you know, they affect plastic prices. It affects pharmaceutical prices. Obviously it affects everything that travels by any kind of transportation. All of these prices falling is really good for the inflation numbers. So I would expect to see some of that starting to show up. Gold at 1955, the dollar is uh, holding steady, it says right now against the euro. And uh, the Bitcoin bounced back up again to 35.7, if you can believe that. Wow, big, big day for the Bitcoin. And then pre-market, you've got the Dow down $26 or down 0.07. You've got the futures, I mean, S&P down seven bucks, basically flat, down 0.16%. And the NASDAQ down 29 and a half are down about 0.2%. All right, so those are the numbers. Uh, it's a great time for you to join Patreon. Why would it be a great time for you to pay, get uh, join Patreon? Because you want to help me out. That's it. You know, it's five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month. You can do it. It would be just a big plus. It would help me to, to, it would just help me to pay my bills. No, okay, my bills are paid. It would, <laughs> it, it will make it feel more valuable to me because it's not right now paying me what I'm used to getting paid. And I would like, since I'm putting 40 hours a week in, it would just make me feel so much better if I was getting paid at a, a level close to I'm not expecting to go back to the, to the days when I had 100 employees in a big manufacturing facility. I just like to get closer. All right, anyway, um, and just support the channel. That's all. All right, listen, and uh, buy the cyber trucks, buy the cyber trucks, buy the cyber trucks. And do tell me whether you want stainless steel or camo when you place your order. It has been great, as always, having this conversation with you.